Hello everybody, it's Darren from Republic of Play, and today we're doing something a little bit different for the channel, which is starting off a brand new Let's Play for Imperator Rome, specifically taking a look at the 1.2 Cicero update. Now the reason for this is that I'm going away for a while, so I thought it'd be good to get some regular content out on the channel. And the other reason is I'm having a lot of fun with Imperator in the latest updates. There's still stuff to be improved, no doubt, but I think now is a good time to kind of answer the question of whether or not you should come back and play it, or whether or not you should buy it if you haven't already. Remember, this is still the Cicero beta. The full update is a little later in September, so things are still subject to change. But I think enough has changed now that they seem to be just balancing rather than adding new mechanics at this point. So we're going to be playing as the Bosporan Kingdom, which is a really good hotbed of different features that we can test out immediately. We can show all the new naval stuff because we're surrounded by coastline and we're kind of on the fringes of Hellenic society here in the north where it's very uncivilized and uncultured and uncolonized up in the north. So we can really see how the pop mechanics work to do with assimilations and cultures and things like that. All the new buildings and the new power resources. So we're going to check all of that stuff out. And I think the Bosporan Kingdom is a really good one to do because this is going to be a bit more of a mini series where our goal is going to be to try and solidify the entire coastline all around the Pontus Exunus, the Black Sea itself. So I think that's a pretty fun challenge to do. We're going to try and take everything around here eventually. So it's a bit more of a mini series because no doubt you know in a few weeks time the update's going to roll out and maybe this save won't even work anymore but um it should give you guys a pretty good idea of where the game is at now and how fun it is now and what mechanics are in place and what to expect later down the line because there's a few obvious things that I think they're they're definitely going to be adding in the future and we'll talk about that as we get into it. Now you might be recognizing just before we start you might be recognizing different music in the background if you're familiar with the game and that is just my own music playlist I've got my own kind of campaign music and my own war music, uh, just because, just for flavor, really, because the, the original soundtrack has just gotten a bit stale for me right now. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's get started. So Bosporan Kingdom, we have Hellenistic heritage. They have Greek traditions in their military. They're an autocratic monarchy. Hellenic Macedon, or not Macedon, sorry, Hellenistic um, culture group. Our basilisk is Spartacus the Third Spartacid. Our population is reasonable size for the amount of cities we, or uh, territories we have. They call them territories now. We have 14 of them. And we also have a tribal vassal called Heniokia. Apologies if I pronounced that wrong. I have no idea. But that's, that's as close as I can get to it. So let's just jump right in and get started. And we can kind of look at a bit more of our spe specific things a little bit later. All right, cool. We're finally in and we're started. So... Let's have a look at our initial alerts up here in the top, and then we'll kind of go through some of the mechanics then, some of the things that we want to achieve first of all. So we have a disloyal character straight off the bat, we'll take a look at them later. First things first is we have a look at the trade routes of our capital, and get to know ourselves here. So our province, this province is called Torica, and our other province is called Maeotia, so the two purple areas here. And then this is within the region of Torica, which happens to be the same name as the province here. It's a little bit confusing, but... Hopefully you guys get it. So our province of Torica in Torica, it seems. Anyway, so our capital is Pantacapion. And um, let's see. Yeah, pretty good, actually. You know, we've got 10 citizens, 8 freemen, a little bit of tribesmen creeping in and some slaves. And we'll have to sort them all out. So let's get our trade going initially. I think always a nice thing to start off with is just get your little population boost. So we'll get some grain in. It might be interesting to get some iron, actually, to get us the heavy infantry, really. But I think I'll go grain first, because we're not going to be too aggressive right at the beginning. Um, so we could go from Phrygia, we could get from Colchis, Getia, or Scythia. Now, Scythia, we're probably going to end up attacking. So I think it's a bit safer to go with someone like Getia, who's a bit further away and probably won't really get involved in any conflict with us for a while. And that way, the trade won't get interrupted. So we'll get both, both of them from Getia. So there we go. So what we're doing there is we're getting two lots of grain in. The reason we get two is because if we have a capital surplus, we'll get a national manpower benefit of 10%. And the, then the original surplus just gives us extra food. And then we also get a food modifier. So food is a new concept in the game, which we'll talk about just a little bit later when it really crops up. But essentially, we have our bread basket here that's just going to fill up over time. And that is the food for the entire province. And all the cities within this province, all of these little cities here, they are contributing to that food at the moment. Um, actually, sorry, they're territories. Really got to get get that ingrained into my head because I'm always going to be calling them cities. But the territories here are all contributing to our food at the moment. And uh, we shouldn't really have any problems with it. It should be fine because we've got plenty. Uh, so the next thing is lack of commander. So let's assign a commander. So Spartacus is actually the our basilisk. He's our king, our ruler. He is the 
optimal choice for this. It's ranked from the most optimal to the least, and it's not that good, actually. Marshal 6 isn't really that high, but we'll go with them anyway, so we'll pop, pop him in charge of the army here. D and it's just an army of archers, so that's kind of... That's not great. We'll have to sort that out. Another lack of commander on the navy, so we'll pop someone down there as well. Um, probably not going to use the navy too much, so we'll put another Sparta kid down there. Actually, there's so many. There's quite a lot of Sparta kids. We'll have to look at the family soon. Just put another guy down there for now. Uh, the next one is Scorned Families. That's okay. We don't need to worry about that. An Unmarried Ruler. So Spartacus the third Sparta kid for some reason, doesn't have a father, mother, siblings, or anything. Now, I think this is just because we're kind of a forgotten nation within this game. They really need to flesh that out because we are part of a family that is quite expansive, yet we don't seem to have any history, which is really, really weird. So that's a bit of a shame. That's obviously something they've got to fix. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's arrange a marriage and let's look for someone to co-rule uh, or be our consort, consort to help us rule. So sort by age. Um, this is the thing that's confusing me, because they're all Sparta kids, so it's like, are they, <laughs> how related are they? But I guess they're not direct siblings, so we should be okay. <laughs> we can kind of say it's a distant cousin thing. Um, so we want to look for someone who complements his traits, kind of fills in the traits that he's low on. So he has 6, 6, and 6 for martial charisma and zeal. So we're going to look for someone that's a bit higher in those categories. Um, this woman's pretty good, Calanthus Sparta kid. She's 20 years old. She's 9 martial and 8 zeal, and she is a polymath and uncaring. Yeah, let's go with her. A suitable match. Blistering with excitement, Spartacus summoned his domestic aid after far too long alone. He decided to extend an offer of marriage to the attractive young maiden Calanthus of the Spartacid dynasty. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that confused me a bit, but whatever. Despite the appearance of Spartacus, head of the Spartacid family, it seems that all concerns were solved by the promises of eternal fidelity that Spartacus had offered. So we'll get some loyalty or we could lose political influence if we say no to her after our original offer, I guess. All right, yeah, let's, let's do it. So that's good, they're married, that's taken care of. Not bad, if I do say so myself. Um, all right, scorn families, you don't need to worry about that. We could get inventions, inventions cost money. This is your tech, we don't need to worry about that right now. And then omens. So let's have a look at our income. We make four from taxes and and a half from commerce, 0.45. Um, so it might be worth focusing on tax income a bit more. That's one of our omens here in our Hellenic religion tree. Um, so we get 22% out of tax if we do the blessing of Hades. This doesn't cost anything anymore to do. And you, the amount that you get from these things is based on your religious unity. So we've only got eight pops in the entire country that it aren't part of um, the Hellenic faith. So we're really okay on that one. Um, and we have a current negative one unrest. So everything should be pretty good right now. Omen power is quite strong. So yeah, do we want to go with that? I think so. I think that's a good one to go with. Just get that little bit of money early on. So bonus to tax. I mean, 22% on, on a four income. It's really not that much. But over time, over time. <laughs> right, so we've got some idea slots. So... Every, every um, government and every yeah, type of government has different amounts of ideas or different types of ideas. We have military, civic, and religious. We can get any idea we want, but matching the ideas will give us the bonus of a slave output 10%. So again, that's going to buff our tax incomes because uh, slaves are the guys that bring in tax. Okay, so I'm going to go with, we can get morale, ship, what was that? Shipbuilding cost reduction or morale recovery and reinforcement. I'll go with regular morale for armies. On the civic side, we could reduce the cost of buildings and build time, or we could increase the commerce or increase the slave output even further. I'm going to go with the building one, because I think that's a bit more important for the beginning of the game, because you're building a lot. And then the zeal, the religious side of things. So our state religion, we could have country civilization increased. We could have loyalty of all our subjects, which we do have a subject. And then we have ruler popularity gain. So let's have a look at our ruler. Does he need a popularity gain? He is declining... But he is in charge of an army, so if we end up going to war and he does win, he might do well. But he's not that well-versed at fighting. He's okay. Yeah, a bit risky. I don't know. I think, I think we'll, I'll go with the, the civilization change more than anything. I want to attract... I want to remove as many tribesmen as we can and attract as many citizens as we can. And get the most out of them that way. So let's do that. Okay, so then we have... Yeah, our invention. So now... We have to think diplomatically, right? Where are we going to go first? Well, the biggest threat in my eyes is probably Scythia, maybe then Sarmatia. 
and obviously the guys down here, but this will all kind of take care of itself, I would imagine, when Phrygia kind of collapses or, or envelops the others. We'll have to see. Thrace is always a, a pretty big issue as well, but we need to be bigger before we can take on the really big guys. But I think we need to stop the current big ones, right? We're just about the same size as Scythia. Uh, we could actually check how much cities they have. So they've got 20. They've got 20 territories. And we've got 14. So yeah, they're the guys that we really want to keep our eye on and put them down. So let's do that. Let's figure out how to do that. So I think what we'll need to do is get an ally. We have a vassal, so they'll come to our aid. We could get an ally with Zygia. They're not the strongest, but I mean, it might be nice to help. They've got pirate heritage. Oh yeah, we might see pirates pop up as well. Let's offer them an alliance they're willing to accept. And let's try another country here, Syndica. I think it's good just to have these two. Let's keep our eastern border secure while our north, while we fight on the north. I think that's a good idea. Okay, very easy actually. They were straight away receptive to that. Because I, I guess at the very beginning of the game, they haven't really formed any, I don't know, relations and opinions of you, I suppose, yet. So we've got 40 political influence left. Now, political influence is going to be the sum total of all the loyalty that comes from all our characters. And we saw that this guy, Parasades Spartakid, is, has low loyalty. So let's look at our government. We have four possible successors to the throne, the next in line, if something goes wrong with Spartacus. But he is 26, he's a young king, he'll be here for quite a while, we would hope. And the succession support of this guy is two, so he's just the next in line. I don't know exactly why, because he's not our... If we have a kid, our kid will be the next in line, probably. And this guy is the epistrategist, so he is con contributing to the offices here. He is contributing to the reduction of mercenary army maintenance, which we don't have any mercenaries, so it's fine. It's not really important, but he does have low loyalty. So you have to think about what can we do to give him more loyalty. So what we could do is we could bribe him. We could send him off somewhere else, but his loyalty is just a bit too low. We could give him a holding, but that would then make him more powerful over time and give him a lot more money to use. And then his schemes would be like, he's actually trying to buy a holding for himself right now. Uh, we could bring him to trial and see what happens. So there's a pretty low chance of success, 37% right now. So what I'm going to do is give him free hands. Free hands means, what's his loyalty? It says his loyalty is going up by 0.48. I think it'll go down though. I think that's just turn one, day one kind of thing. Because he is the... Actually, no, he is the primary heir. Yeah, it will go up. Yeah, so he should, that should sort himself. It should sort itself out. He might be a problem when we have a kid. But for now, he should be, he should be getting better. Um, okay, I don't think there's much else to do. One thing I want to do here is actually build, right? So we have our new buildings and all the different things that come with that. And have a look at our pops in our cities. Our cities are really where we're going to be focusing on the different pops and what's going on. And by the way, it's worth mentioning, I've actually modded the game just very, very slightly because they just updated it. And, I really, and a lot of people are kind of complaining about something that they changed. So one thing they changed is... A city will now have a citizen ideal fraction and a freeman and ideal fraction increase. Now, I've lowered that increase just a little bit, like about by 30% of what it was. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I don't even need to get into the numbers. Essentially, it was just really, really high, and it meant that cities never ended up having slaves, which just doesn't seem, doesn't seem right to me. So I've, I've reduced it a slight bit, so cities still have quite a low amount of slaves over time, but it's still not none. Um, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Now that's really one of the only things I've modded. The other thing is I added in the icons here, here, and here. So the, these three and these three here, they were kind of the default no, you know, missing icon icon. So I've just replaced that right now. And then I've kind of cleaned up this UI just a little bit. So that that's really the extent of the mods we're running. So everything else is basically as the, the beta was when I've recorded this. Um, so let's have a look. So we've got 10 citizens. And they have an optimal ratio of 25%. So that's that means we're going to be losing citizens because our current ratio is 34%, right? They're over the ratio, so they're going to start demoting uh, over time, probably. Right now, we're actually demoting a... Oh, it is a citizen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Is that happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's being demoted. Sorry, I just wasn't sure because it was grayed out. All right, so someone's been demoted. Now, we don't want to lose any citizens because cities offer... They have ports. Does this have a port? Actually, it doesn't have a port, but cities give you a little bit more from commerce, typically speaking. 
I'm pretty sure. So this is our commerce income here. Actually, I guess not. I guess not. It's really just the ones that have a port. So I guess not. But cities do attract, tend to attract more citizens and citizens make more commerce. So it is a good idea to focus cities to have more citizens, right? So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go build an academy is going to increase the promotion speed. A library will increase the citizen ideal fraction. So let's do that. So we'll just get one for now. And then we'll do that in here as well. So there's a library. And then this is our other city. So you can tell the cities by the fact that they have an actual uh, actual models of buildings and things on them. Right? And we've got city here as well. So let's have a look at the pops here. So there's a lot of pops migrating to here. Yeah, about six pops or something migrating to this place. And that's because the migration attraction is really high because the civilization value is high. It's a coastal port. There's a lot of room for new pops. So a lot of people are planning to go there. Now, we can actually see where they're coming from. So they're, they are coming mostly internally, it seems. Yeah, I don't see them coming from anywhere. They can come from other other places. Because this territory, this province, is shared up with another country here, they could come from Paniardis or this place. Uh, but it looks like people are just coming here from all over the place. And there's really no way to control that other than just to increase it or decrease the amount of attraction value. But I'm, I'm fine with it for now um, because this is a coastal city as well, so it's nice to have something like that. Um, we don't really have the money to be building another one though, so we'll have to leave it. Okay. Is there anything else we need to do? Man, we've spent a long time just getting ourselves sorted. Um, I don't think so. Not really. We'll have to start forming a claim. I think the first place we're going to try to go to war is probably here. Because our province, they own quite a bit of it. So I think we could try to expand this way. I don't even want to be extremely aggressive in this playthrough. I'd like to try and build a little more tall if we can. But our goal really is to get the coastline. So I think it's good just to make that initial grab and expansion at the beginning. Because there's a city here and there. And that'd be really nice to get two extra cities in this place. Might be a bit more of a hindrance on our food. But we'll have to see how it plays out. So let's open diplomacy. We'll go convert, uh, covert actions and fabricated claim. And that's going to be like that. All right. So for Torica is what our claim is for. All right, cool. Let's um, let's let time play now. And I think maybe we'll get our first invention. Uh, claim fabrication speed increase. Uh, I don't think we really need the speed. Right now. We could do property tax. Extra tax again. Because we're already modifying it a bit. Ah, actually, before we start, we need to look at our economy. We don't need to be paying our armies or our fleets right now, so we can save a little bit of money doing that. All right, and we're good to go. So I'm going to try and play on four times speed most of the time, and we have to react to the political situation around us pretty soon now. I'm going to keep an eye on this guy's loyalty. It is going up. That's our first month done with. So we've had our first month tick. So on the first of every month, you know, different things happen. We get our incomes and and all of that stuff. Anyone playing Paradox games familiar with that? What's this? An offer of alliance from uh, Chersonesis. So down here. No, we're gonna we're gonna attack them. So no. I won't be. I'll try not to pause it too often as well. Actually, it's kind of nice just to let it play. And we'll see how things go in the world. It'd be kind of cool if you got like um. I mean, there is a ledger message log thing that shows you what's going on around the world. But I kind of wish there was a. Maybe a yearly report on the different kind of diplomatic things that have happened. A war proposal from Zygia. Zygia. Uh, the Scythian local power Zygia is requesting that we bring war upon... S no. Oh, my two allies want to fight each other already. If we reject, Zygia may complain, but they'll follow our command. Oh, okay. So they won't do it if we say no. War proposal shot down. So it was a proposal. They weren't specifically saying that they were going to do it. Okay. I didn't know they could actually do that. That's kind of neat. So they're not going to fight each other. I do not want them to fight each other. In fact, I want them to be... I want them to like me more. So I'm going to improve their opinion with them. Make them happy and improve these guys' opinion as well. Because we want them to come to our aid if we have to fight. So that's spent all of our political influence. Now we really need to boost the loyalty of this guy. Because he's dragging down our income. We're making 1.38. But we could be making 2. If everyone had 100% loyalty... We'd be making two political influence per month. That's like the max you can get. Okay, so some of our buildings have been built. Our library has been built. Now, this is going to mean that our 
optimal ratio just went up by 4%, right? So we need another one of those so that our, our citizens don't demote down. Now this first one might demote down, but then after that they won't anymore. And that way it'll start kind of converting the tribesmen, right? So you want this, this number here is the optimal ratio. This is the current ratio, and this is how many there are. So the optimal ratio is 35% right now for freemen. So it's going to try and promote up or demote down till, till it gets that number even. And it keeps doing that for all the classes. Now tribesmen and slaves don't display that number, but they do internally in the code have a number like that. I don't know why they don't display it, but we'll just have to kind of let it sort itself out that way. All right. So how's it going? Our, our claim is at 22%. It's moving by 3.2% each turn or each month. And that's mostly due to the charisma at 1.20 and then the base amount. Yeah. Cool. All right. All good. The Epic Rider. A man approaches us with requests for a room and some help to write a grand tale for the ages. He promises he will make sure to include the Bosporan Kingdom into the tale. So it will be beneficial for us as well as himself. If he manages to write this epic, we will receive all the goodwill as the common folk, as well as showing everyone the what wise, beneficial rulers we are. So we could make sure that he, all his needs are fulfilled by paying him money. Or just give him a little bit. Or say no. I'll, uh, yeah, go for it. Let's see what happens. Cost 32. I'm okay with that. Our legitimacy is actually 100%, which is really nice. And we need to do the old stabby pig, but we need 41 but right now our stability is actually going up, which is kind of interesting. It's supposed to trend towards 50, but we've got a little bit extra because of our ruler's zeal. And that's coming from her. So she's going to raise our stability of our nation, our consort. So Calanthus, we appreciate you. She's pregnant. Oh my days. She's pregnant with a due date of the 8th of November. Well, that's amazing technology that they know that. 8th of November. Not long now. We'll have our little boy. And then we might get loyalty problems with this guy because he won't be the primary heir. So he'll lose his little loyalty benefit. I'd be quite unhappy that suddenly little baby Spartacus, or whatever our name is. What is it? Sp it is Spartacus. <laughs> little baby Spartacus will be uh, the favorite. All right, how's it going? So we're at 41% for the claim. Our relations are improving kind of nice. That's good. Not much else to do. Um, oh, hey, our baby's been born. Cool. Let's have a look at it. So it is Spartacus. Oh, that's annoying, man. We have Spartacus the third Spartakid, and then our kid is just called Spartacus Spartakid. Man, this is going to get confusing, but he should be Spartacus the fourth. I wish I could write it. You can't um, rename or anything. That's such a shame. Well, anyway, there he is. He's he's going to grow up and see. we'll see what becomes of him. Spartacus the fourth. Um, something I meant to do, actually, we have a uh, trade route here, so we should really import something. Let's see what livestock does. Livestock, food modifier, 10%. Yeah, we'll just do that, and we'll get it from Getia again. All right, the epic finish. The grand tale of the Argonautica have been completed. Oh, wow, already? With Bosper and Kingdom playing an important role in the tale for the hunt of the Golden Fleece. People from far and wide come to our lands to hear the original tale of Jason and the Argonauts. Some people claim a new Homer has been born, while others lay the honor at our feet for supporting the arts. So we're going to get a tax modifier, a legitimacy modifier. Wow, this is really good. That was well worth the 32. And it's going to last for 20 years. Nice. And we just buffed our own popularity up to 100%. Almost 100. Sweet. Easy peasy. Um, right, so we've got a little bit more money. Maybe we could um, build another building. So we'll build another library. And then after that, I'll probably build an academy so that pops promote even faster. So right now, we're promoting a tribesman into a freeman. And that's going at a rate of 1.20 per month. Not too sure why that's so low. It seems quite low, but there it is. I've seen this being up at like 20% before and it like ticks up really quickly. And with with, with what I'm seeing in this tooltip, it seems like it should be going quicker. But either way, there it is. It'll take a while, I suppose. And we have lost one citizen. So the goal, is, another kind of goal of ours is going to be to remove as many tribesmen as we have. So tribesmen, we have 22, right? We want to get rid of as many of them as we can. Make them freemen, make them slaves, make them citizens, whatever the case may be. That's what we should have. We shouldn't have anything in this category, really. Now, Maeotia. Let's have a look at Maeotia. Maeotia has a pretty even split of different cultures here. We've got Hebrew, 
Maotian, and then Bosporan, which is us. And then we have Heptatic and Jewish religion. So right now, there is cultural pop assimilation going on here. So we know that a bunch of pops have moved to this place or are moving here. So what we'll do is we'll have a conversion building here. It's going to take a while till we can afford it. But a temple will convert that religion. Right now, we're converting culture. Let's have a look. Is the culture changing, though? The culture isn't even changing. So this is a total waste having this on right now because nothing's going to be affecting it. So really what we need is religious conversion. No one's even converting religiously, actually. Why is that? There are no pops in this territory that can be converted. Oh, that's because everyone here is Hellenic and Bosporan. It's just the rest of the... Oh, okay. But they'll actually they'll, they'll filter in soon. So once they do, then it'll make sense. But right now, no one here in this specific territory actually needs to be converted, so that's why. Uh, we just gained a little bit of money. And we got some extra uh, opinion. So let me read this. Sorry, tribal proposition. Our tribal neighbor, Syndicia, Syndica, has started investing a lot of their treasury into opening up the borders between our nations. Hopefully this will provide beneficial for us as well, though their tribesmen are somewhat unruly, more unruly than we're used to. We should keep Syndica in mind as they, could have, uh, they can prove good friends in the future. So yeah, we just gained a little bit of an opinion modifier. Got a little bit of extra un unrest as we got tribal influx coming in at Labbers and some extra tax though. So there you go. Um, okay, let's build a temple. Because no doubt... Oh man, actually, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm building for something that's just never going to happen right now, it seems. I don't know what's going to happen really, but... Essentially what I just checked there, all the pops that are arriving here are already Hellenic. So, okay. <laughs> but we do have a lot of tribesmen arriving here. So what we'll do instead is just do what we did in the other place and build um, an academy or what we were planning on doing. Because this is going to increase the promotion speed and get rid of those tribesmen. All right, cool. So that's some of the, you know, the pop over time stuff that you worry about. It seems very granular. You know, you're really spending a lot of time looking at just a, a couple of cities. But I guess that's the idea. I don't know how it's going to be managed on scale, though. I guess we'll find out. So the claim currently against Tercenarus... Chersonesis is 80%. Now, they have actually formed an alliance with Scythia. So if we're going to go to war, Scythia is going to probably come in. So what I'm going to do is fabricate a claim on Scythia, uh, uh, Scythia once we get our next monthly tick. And oh, i got to wait one more. We've got 19. We need 20 to do it. So there is still a little bit of mana that you're waiting for sometimes. <laughs> All right, fabricated claims. So we're going to fabricate Bosporanum because we already fabricated Toria with the other people. Now, the reason I'm getting two fabrications, two claims, is because in the war, in the peace deal, if we win, when we're claiming the territories, it'll be cheaper and le cost us less aggressive expansion. And that allows us to get more in the peace deals because we've already got a claim on it. So we've already proposed that we should get this in a way. Um, okay, so what's the next thing? Starting experience 5%. That would be kind of neat. Improve opinion, f fabrication speed. Let's get that one because we're, now we're going to need the speed. And I'll leave the technologies just for a bit as it costs money. So the next thing then, I think we should start recruiting because we're almost done. We've just finished our first claim. So I'm going to get four light infantry and then some f about four horse archers when we can afford them. Yeah, we've got horse archers because we have the step horses. We have the step horses trade good, which allows us to produce that. So the Olympic Games that just happened. This happens really regularly, so I won't bother reading it. It's just basically the Olympic Games are happening. Who do you want to send off to join? So we could either send off uh, Neoptolemus, who is just a member of a family, or we could send off Ekasrinkel, Ekasrinki who is the head of another family. So it's fine. They don't have any jobs. If they don't have any jobs, then you might as well just send them. It's okay. Uh, this guy's younger, so he might have a better chance. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. If they do well, then we might get a popularity boon, some other things. Uh, so that was horse archers done. We need three more. Each one costs 10. We've got pirates. So pirates have just raided our port here. And that's going to basically give us a negative modifiers here. I can't really do anything about that. I mean, we have a fleet. It's really small, though. 
I kind of think we just have to let the pirates do their thing until we can build up enough to where we've got a decent fleet to protect ourselves. Um, so a question of competence. After a few weeks of nervous looks and smirks at court, the whispers circling the palace have finally reached the ears of the basilisk. It seems that someone has been spreading rumors and spinning yarns of his unequaled profligacy and unfitness for the throne. The damage has been done, now all, the, all look to how the basilisk will deal with the situation. Surely Spartacus is bigger th than rising to this. Or no one can freely insult us. So we'll gain popularity doing this, but 50-50 chance that he may become vengeful or nothing will happen. Well, let's see. Ah, nothing happened. We didn't get vengeful, we, didn't, we just got popularity. So that was a good gamble. Cool, so we've got one now, we just need one more. And the next thing I'm gonna do then as well... Slanderer spills all! Oh no, it's this guy again. The traitor snake who attempted to demean the name of Spartacus III has been identified as none other than Paris, who quickly confessed to his crimes. How should we deal with this vagabond? This guy was low, low loyalty. Look at him, 32.7%. Disgusting. Um, so we could forget him and his reputation will be ruined. Oh, forget him. His reputation is ruined, sorry, and he'll lose a ton of loyalty. Or perhaps he could be won over. So we'll get a little bit of money. We'll, he'll gain 10 loyalty, but we'll gain a little bit of corruption, so will he. I think we'll have to do that, because I want to keep him kind of more loyal, if we can. You don't want to gain too much corruption as a young ruler, because that stuff is really hard to get rid of. It's hard to get rid of corruption. It sticks with you for a long time, lowering things like legitimacy and influence and stuff. This says monthly political influence. Oh yeah, minus 3%. Yeah. Alright. So we're now almost three years into the game. So we're taking it slow, I guess. But we're about to have a war. Pretty soon. Olympics concluded. Five popularity. Cool. Alright, good. So what do we got? We need one more horse archer unit. Done. We have our claims. We have one of our claims. Our other claim will complete during the war. So I think by the time it's over, we can still, you know, it'll still pay off. Now, what do these guys got? They have 12 cohorts. Okay. Now, can we afford to pay our armies? Yeah, we can. We're still making money. Good. Our tax value is nice and high. 6.69. If we started with it on, on like four. And let's have a look at our pops. We still have a decent amount of slaves. Good. And these, are, these numbers are starting to balance out. You can see like 31%, 34% to 35, you know, so nothing, not much is going to really change other than, I guess, some tribesmen are just going to get promoted in if they have the room. So we need to make room for them, really. We have two libraries, though. Yeah, so we need just a little bit more room, maybe. We don't really have the money right now, so we just have to wait. So we're paying our armies. What I'm going to do is actually drill the army now. And this means that it's going to be... It's basically going to be gaining experience, but it costs a lot more to maintain. And they might become loyal to our leader, but that's okay if they become loyal to him. We want that, really. Um, if they become loyal to him, he basically pays for them out of his own pocket, so our army becomes cheaper. So this is really good when it's your ruler, not so good when it's a different general, because then he, he kind of almost takes control of the army himself. These guys are still looking for an alliance. Yeah, not going to happen, son. All right, and the reason that it's good to drill is you'll gain military experience as well based on the cohort experience that you have. Cohorts are units. So the more experience these guys build up, the more military experience we earn over time. And obviously the more capable they are when they fight. Um, I think we're pretty much ready. I think we're pretty much ready. We've got our allies. What the hell happened over here? Oh my god, they lost their territory from... I can actually colonize it? What? I can send a Hellenic Bosporan citizen from our capital to here because it's... Coastal? There's no port here. That seems really weird. And it's not even the same province. It's a whole different province. Do we want to do that? No. It won't be able, we won't be able to support its food. We'll get it later. Hopefully these guys will recolonize it. That seems so weird. It's just empty territory. It's not belonging to them. It's just empty. Wow, I've never seen that. They just lost their... Um, they must have migrated away. Like, that's the only way they could have... That could have happened. Anyway. Um, yeah, we're just going to wait just a little bit longer, and then we're going to attack. I just want to build up a little bit of a foundation of money. So we can't really get any of this stuff yet. So I'll just speed it up. We're five years into the game now, just about. 
incompetent storage. It's come to our attention that a substantial amount of, of the state food stockpiles of the province of Torca have seemingly disappeared overnight. The whereabouts of the supplies are still debated. Some claim group of assertive Celtiberian merchants swindled an incompetent clerk. Others that a vengeful god spirited them away in anger. In any case, the reserves are severely diminished. We'll just have to buy it back. Fuck that. With 200 gold. No way. Uh, heads will roll. We'll become cruel. We'll gain popularity though. We'll still lose. We're going to lose that food no matter what. Um, the province of Torica loses loyalty. That's okay, yeah. They can always grow more. <laughs> I guess so. Man, 500 food, that sucks. For nothing. For no reason. Alright, I think uh, and we wasted enough time. Let's, uh, let's get over there. So the army's on the march. We got a little bit of experience, not much, but it might, it might change things. Um, so Spartacus gained the original original thinker trait, which is going to basically increase his martial by one. Perfect, because we're going to war with him in a sec. All right. Let's just double check that this is going to work. So Scythia will be against us, and Zygia will be with us. But it seems like, I don't remember this happening, but these guys are not my ally? They're planning my demise, eh? <laughs> okay. Well, I was kind of hoping they'd come help me. Hmm. That changes things just a slight bit. Okay. Well, we'll I'm still going to commit to this. Oh, you know what? You know what we need to do? Okay. Before we do it, then we'll have to just build a fort. And once we do that, then that's it. Then we'll go to war. So we'll build a fort right here. This will stop them just like pushing really far behind me or something. We'll keep, we'll keep drilling, and we'll just let time go by. So it's going to take a while. It does take two years for a fort to be built. That's my bad. I didn't get that done before, but then we should be good to go. And in the so we'll just speed it up. I will have to keep an eye on these guys. Then in the meantime, I don't know why they're just planning my demise. We should have good opinion. Oh, they now they have an alliance with me. Option. Okay. Weird. Right, they're they're my ally now. And we just got our claim on Scythia as well. Okay, cool. Alright, it's actually coming together. It's a good thing we waited then if they're gonna help us. And we're just slowly building up that experience. So we're gonna wanna change this to something like skirmishing, which is gonna improve our horse archer effectiveness, pretty much everything we have. So skirmishing is the best thing we can do, but we could get countered, we'll have to see. Uh, the freemen from Masai Tiki. Uh, a large group of freemen have left the city in Hanokia to come settle down in our city of Lampus, Torica. Though more manpower could do us good, the men and women of the original country are known for their wild antics and could cause issues. So it'll be fine, let them settle, and we'll gain two freemen, or we could say no. I'll, I'll let them settle. We'll gain a little bit of unrest there, but whatever. So they came from our tribal vassal. We've got a new omen. Let's increase the morale of our armies, because we know we're going to be going to war. Alright, we've got more political influence now, so what I'm going to do is actually increase our stability. That's going to increase our income and in pretty much everything. Um, Minister of Excellence. So we have... Artemidas Spartacid, this guy, in a fine display of financial acumen, has made significant alterations to the national budget. We should expect to see much better value, re much better revenue this year. Excellent, 10% tax, or he does, he deserves to reap the rewards himself. Now he's, he's, he's kind of low loyalty actually. Pretender, he's a pretender to the throne. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he is. Um. No. <laughs> I want the global benefit. <laughs> Alright, those guys again offered me an alliance. Alright, one year to go, almost to the day, and then we start our war. So we'll build up a nice bit of tasty experience by then. I don't think there's anything else I need to do, really. I've been thinking about getting different laws, but we don't have the influence to spend right now. We'll have to wait until we build up a bit. And our money is going up just by one. It's good that it's going up, though, while we're paying for our armies. That's usually not that common. Uh, we just traded something to Phrygia, which is fine. In fact, what did we trade to Phrygia? I probably should have checked that. Citizens are euphoric. The patriotic citizens in Panticapion, our uh, capital, are ecstatic at our benevolent rule. In honor of our, our majesty, they've kindly raised a rather pitiful sum of gold, hoping to procure some political favor. So we just gained 20. Cool. 
Uh, manual trade will manually evaluate. We are not allowing trade off yet. Okay, so we have sent fish to uh, Phrygia, which is going to give us the export bonus of Freeman Happiness, which will increase our manpower. Good. All right, not much else to do. Fortress is built. Here we go. All right, no more waiting around. Scythia, and we can call both our allies in. We're going to take Torica. It begins. So like I said, I've actually got war music. Maybe we'll play that now. It might be a bit over the top. We'll see. I'm going to go into forced march and rush this army. They've just turned on their... Um, they weren't paying their army, so they just turned it on now. They're looking to move. Oh, sorry. The time just went by really fast there. Whoa, weirdly, their fort hasn't stopped me moving. Maybe they're not even paying their forts. Bad move on their part. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Battle. Pretty easy. They haven't had a chance to really um, pay their armies yet. So we kind of surprised, jumped them. This is still a problem with the game, the fact that you can do that. I mean, I was literally training on the uh, border, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, how much more obvious do you need to be? Speaking of not paying your forts, yeah, okay. It actually auto turns it up now, which is good. So there's the Scythian armies moving around there, about 8,000 of them. We've got our allies coming in though now, so Syndicate are on their way. So they should kind of defend this fort region, I would imagine, and keep everything good while we do the siege. There's only 500 garrison here, wow. It's tempting to assault it, but we, we wouldn't do too well. It is tempting though. So what have we got? Disloyal characters. That's okay. Bad research ratio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretender support and we can get new inventions. So what I'm planning on doing back at our capital is I still want to increase the amount of libraries we have. Because we want more citizens. Let's do that. And maybe we could do... Yeah, there's nothing else really I want. Maybe just the money from imports. So we lost this territory because of the fort itself. Looks like Syndica are going to win that battle, just about. They have allies coming in. They've actually got less troops, but it looks like they're going to win. Yeah, and they managed to take out the reinforcements. Good job on Syndica. So they're keeping it busy while we work down here. This isn't the most efficient thing to be doing, really. Yeah, in fact, it's not. So let's um, detach our siege. I can't seem to move at all for some reason. That's really weird. Yeah, I don't know why I'm stuck like that. I guess, I guess because it's just, the, I guess the fort has, I should be able to go out the way I came in though. Anyway, seems like I kind of messed up. I can only go here, but then I won't be able to go here because I'll be still attached to the fort region. It's really weird. Okay. Uh, let's read that in a second. So we have requests of the highest, or. Uh, Request trade route. So from Byzantium, uh, they want to get fish. Yeah, no worries. Have all the fish you want. So disagreement on the highest level. Uh, Paul Perchin, Nicked. A man of sound reputation and Stickley's, Castickley's Spartacid, a nobleman of great virtue, have recently started to spar furiously. We could side with one of them. One of them is the Hierophant. The other is the rival of the researcher. So he doesn't matter. He doesn't have a job. We'll side with this guy then. Keep him happy. He'll get loyalty. The other guy loses it. That's fine, though. The other guy doesn't have anything. These guys' navies are out, but I'm keeping mine docked for now. It looks like the Syndicate... Uh, Syndica are going to lose that battle there. Hey, we've had a new child. So we've had three children now. We have Spartacus IV, Philippus, and Laodike. And that's a girl. Are these guys... Yeah, they are with me in the fight. It's just they haven't brought any armies in yet themselves, I don't think. Oh, no, they're, they're here. Mm, actually, I don't know. I have no idea. That's all right, though. We're doing okay. Although they've kind of lost some battles, which is a bit worrying. But we're 14% on the siege, so it shouldn't be too long now. These guys need to get up here, like, you know. My vassal. 8k just sitting down there. They probably don't have the um, 
military access, and I guess they don't have the fleet power to do. I actually saw um, in the game before they loaded up unit by unit onto ships and came one by one when they didn't have the full fleet to do it. Oh shit, they've actually got heavy infantry, at least one unit. These are incredibly small skirmishes that are taking place on the borders of the Empire right now. But we're doing fine. Oh, one more. Come on. Calanthus Spartacid inspires the army. So our consort, morale was beginning to waver in the camp when Calanthus Spartacid stood up before the assembled soldiers and gave an inspirational speech. She convinced all who were present that the odds of battle were on their side using her extensive knowledge of military tactics. Yeah, she's got nine military. Uh, when the soldiers marched the next day, they did so with confidence that their victory was assured. Nice. Get some little morale benefits for a short while. Done. The sacking of Chersonesius. Uh, has led his men to a glorious victory during the siege. The enemy fleeing disgrace. Needless to say, the spoils of war. We can do it with what we want. So we get, we'll let the looting be gentle. So we plan on taking this place. All right. So we're going to auto cap that. So let's just head up here and capture the surrounding territories. Actually, you know what? We're going to go. S whoops. Who do we want to send? We can send that guy again. He doesn't have a job. I'm going to go straight for battle. It's a better move right now. I don't understand that. How are they going past my fort? Like, how are they doing that? The fort's here. When you come into a region adjacent to a fort, you have to attack the fort. But they're going somewhere else. I'm paying for my forts, haven't I? Yeah. That seems broken. That's like what was happening down here, but backwards. I don't understand that. They're not supposed to be able to go that way. That's why I built the fort. To kind of lock down the adjacent regions. Even-sided battle. Their commander is slightly better than mine. I think our horse archers really make the difference on the on the flanks, though. That seems to be the case. We're playing on hard, by the way, so they get like an inherent advantage to every battle. All right, cool. Battle done. Let's keep going. So our allies will go and fight the fights. Our allies will really kind of get the territories in between. So we don't have to worry about that stuff. Uh, we've got a bit more money now, which is good. So diplomatic reputation. The Olympics have been concluded. Okay, not a big deal. So yeah, we really want to hold this kind of, uh, I don't know, land bridge, I suppose you could call it. Oh, I wish these guys were actually going to take the territories around me instead. So what I'm going to do is we're going to recruit just a couple of units. And then we're going to put them on auto cap and they'll just cap everything. While we go and actually look for the capitals and go for the, the proper fights. Actually, yeah, you know what? Just head up this way. The attrition is going to be pretty rough up this way, I think. Oh my god, yeah. Because the... So this province is a really weird one. It's it's connected lengthways all along the coast. And the capital is up here. So they're already coming down this way. <laughs> that's Scythia. So that's a bit weird and awkward. But we'll just have to see how that goes. Line these two guys up and start auto-capping. If we just get to the next fort and take it, then there's really nowhere for, the, for them to hide. I'm not really worried about them taking our fort. I am worried about taking a huge amount of attrition on the way up here, though. Could be a real waste. One, two, three. We've got a long way to go. We lose 510 men to attrition. Oh, I don't know about this. This That seems way too crazy. Why is it so high? 3% attrition. Why would it be... Why would it be 500 men then? That seems really high. I don't get that. Let's see what happens when they move. Now it's a bit less. 356. Okay, well, we might be okay then. 
Right, so let's do what I was saying here. Let's put them on um, independent operations. Units act independently. Retake your territory. Besiege rebel-held territory. Sweep for and report enemy movement. We'll do independent. I think that means they'll go... Yeah, they'll go start capping some of this stuff that they can. Oh crap, I didn't even mean to do that. Hey, we got a pop though. <laughs> Interestingly, they're choosing to go this, that way. Why would they do that? Oh, more supply limit that way. Yeah. Good idea. Although we've lost our entire right side coastline because of this. This guy right here. So we're kind of circling each other, but there's not much I can do about that until I just take out their forts. They're not taking any forts. The forts are, it's what the whole game is about the fort. Oh crap, we just had a battle. I didn't even see it. They actually have some heavy infantry, but it's not too bad. Again, I think it's the horse archers, which are just going to be destroying everybody on the flanks. And then we need to sit up here, take this fort, and then we are good to just wipe out the remaining armies. Because we are we are easily taking everything. It's just that our right side looks really bad. <laughs> Alright, here we go. There we go. Cool. So, yeah, just got to wait for that siege now. So disloyal characters, let's check this out again. So it is this guy. He's still constantly pissed off. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll bribe him a bit, bring him up, and then we're just going to give him free hands. He's going to become very corrupt. So we'll have to see what happens. But if we keep him loyal and we actually get him to 60, I could even send him off adventuring. And just get him to leave our empire. Where's my auto empire capture thing? There they are. Uh, I'm going to send them back here and turn off those independent operations. Just have something on that fort. We're still making money as well while, I, while we're in war, which is really good. Let's invest in some of the cities down here. So this city, we built one library. Let's check the pops. So they're good for that. Yeah, we could do with having more citizens. Build a couple libraries just to get that citizen number a bit higher. Increase our research ratio because it said it was bad a little bit earlier. Our exhaustion is increasing, but our stability is really good. Man, we are taking severe attrition up here. Um, it might be worth detach siege and then just move somewhere. I just don't want the siege to cancel. That would suck. Might get half of them just to come back, just in case that happens. This way we'll take less attrition if we spread them out like this. How's it going? Let's put a commander on this army just really quickly while they're here. Because we're about to get attacked on our fort. At least if we have a commander, we might... Ugh, maybe not. They are crossing. Like, it is a river crossing. You know, it's a negative to the terrain because of the fort. Our commander is better, but we just don't have many troops. Yeah, so we're still losing. That's alright though, it's just our little supplemental force. It's not a big deal. Alright, the final thing is nearly done then. We're going to bring this army down and retake this stuff. They are sieging my, my capital now, which is not good. So we need to finish our siege first. Right, 42%, which is usually when it's nearly finished. I don't know why that's the case, really, the way the siege phases are done that way, where it's like, oh, 42%, yeah, that means it's done. Let's stab the pig again. No, we're, we're actually really stable, it's fine. Come on, game. All right, so we've got 80... I'm, yeah, I'm going to keep saving this influence, because I want to do a province development. The sacking of Tanais, uh, let the looting be gentle. We'll probably actually take this. It's part of the coast we said we would. All right, let's, um, I don't want to force march. That puts more weight on our troops. Ah, now, interestingly, we can't march through here because we don't have access. And they don't want to give me access. Now, I might send them a gift. And then see if we can get access. They say, they'll say yes once our diplomat returns on the 11th of October. So we just have to wait a bit. What are they on now? 14% shit. We got to be quick. Come on now. 
All right, so we got military access. Let's force march. It doesn't matter about the attrition. We just need to get down there. Go to rescue our capital city. Whispers in the dark. This guy's plotting against us. The greatest threat to any nation comes from, not from without, but from within. Constant infighting between those who would name themselves heir can consume countless resources and lives. Our spies at the court are certain that Paris, a man who has made no secret of his ambitions for the throne, is plotting to ensure his future by doing away with the competition. We should keep a watchful eye. Yes, let's pay to have someone, let's pay to have him closely observed. Peace imminent. You know what? I didn't realize we have them. We like have them. <laughs> I probably could have just pieced out. Although we don't have everything yet. I'd like to get everything. Just destroy them fully. Because we can get all that, you know? I mean, that's quite a lot. And we can even get even... Oh, shit. Hang on, reset that. Now we can go for the individual cities. So we can't get Utah, because there's an army on it. Or their other capital. See, it would be great if we get everything. And we will be able to do that. So let's just... We'll just ride it out until we can get rid of them. Because we don't want a little mini nation hanging on like that. So hopefully the AI up here can just figure out and take out some of these towns. Uh, stagnation, the plot has ended. Okay. It's a little bit le oh, you know, not that interesting, I guess. Man parry recovery speed, yes. So what are they on now? They're on 0%, okay. They're only halfway. Alright, we're gonna have a battle here before they cross, and then we'll kick that fleet out of the port. Battle of Phanagoria, we won. Oh yeah, we're not going to kick the fleet out unless we actually do something about it. Um, so we're going to win this one. Now this is where the game is a bit weird. We're the ones crossing, but we're going to end up not having the terrain penalty, I think. Because we actually occupy this town. Or we own it. Like it is ours. I kind of disagree with that. Yeah, they're the ones that have the river crossing, but it's like they didn't cross anything. You know, they were here. But oh well. That's the way it is. Alright, so we saved the city. Um, now we just need to get those last two areas, I think. We might even be able to get them now. Needs to be occupied. Okay, well, we just have to go up there and occupy it then. Alright, that's the last things to do, and then we will be able to take out those two countries all in one. And we're going to take on a huge lo load of problems when we do that, but it should be worth it. Their armies, you know, Chersenaris are, like, their armies are all the way up here. We're just force marching around, though. It's kind of hard to see. So our disloyal character, is he still disloyal? Wow, he's still disloyal, even with the free hands, because he's plotting. Oh man, that sucks. Plotting negative 40. That's pretty bad. It's kind of annoying. It's like, no matter what I do, like you're just going to be plotting. Alright, let's take it. These are barbarians that have roamed south. They just happen to be here. Take them out, take that last city, and then we should be good. We'll probably move on Olbia soon after that then as well. Alright, Barbarians defeated. All good. Capped. Let's go. Are we done yet? Not yet. I'm kind of confused why, like, we can't get that. if we. Oh, we just need the... Maybe we need the capital. Shit, I just realized. Retreat. Fall back. All right, let's engage this. This could be the final battle then over here. Seems like it will be anyway. Oh no, we can get everything. That's it. That's GG. Because we got the capital. Yep. See you later, guys. Let me just double check that. Yes. All right, so that is victory. War is over. We're now a regional power, which gives us a bunch of different effects. So the uh, Chersonese, the Chersonese elite. So let's have a look. Let's pass judgment on their families. Do the same with the Scythians. <clears throat> 
So these are the families of Scythia. So I'd like to take about one family from each country I destroy. Let's take the uh, Kassakid family. Why not? And then with these guys... Um, let's see who has the most. The Zenonid family. And then we'll just have the rest crucified. Alright, so... Our alliances have turned into guarantees. Because we're now a regional power. And there we go. So that is... Probably where we're going to end up, actually, for this first part. Because we went quite a while, but it's good to get the war done in the end. So, nice little... Let's have a get rid of that. Look at that. Oh, clean borders, man. I love it. Hang on, actually. Let's just let time play a tiny bit. There we go. Even cleaner now. Even cleaner. Beautiful. Look at that. We did it. I did it, Mom. So, we're going to have a bunch of problems now with this territory. It should be fun to kind of fix and sort out. And then we're going to look at... Uh, uh, you know, think about where we're going to go next. Probably get these Greeks, these Olbians, um, maybe see if we can integrate some of the guys that we had around here or something like that. And then we'll have to start thinking about big boy Thrace, want to keep them happy. It might be nice to actually jump down here, this is what I did um, before on the stream when I played it real quickly. We jumped down to Byzantium and Bithynia, because there's a lot of Greek territories around down here. So let's just have a quick look. Yeah, so that is all that purple, that's what we want. It's all ripe for the taking, less conversions, less hassle. Um, and I think it'd be a lot of fun doing that. So, yeah, that's going to be part one for this Let's Play. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I think it's uh, pretty good. Just a little bit slower in the, in the beginning because there's not much to do. But now that we've taken out that first enemy, we can really start getting involved with some of the planning on development of our actual towns. Maybe changing some laws, getting to know our characters. Because I feel like we haven't gotten to know them too well. I usually like to really get involved with them. But it's been pretty simple going so far. You know, we just have Spartacus. He's had his three children. We have that one disloyal guy who's a bit of a, uh, a pain in the ass. Um, he's disloyal quite a bit and he's plotting against us. So we have to keep an eye on, uh, I keep calling him Paris. It is Paris. Paris cities. Paris cities. Uh, but I'll keep calling him Paris. So yeah, we have to keep an eye on Paris. He's got a lot of support. Um, when the secession happens and if he's still around, he's still old, he's going to be a big problem. And he's just plotting quietly, which is just lowering that loyalty all the time. We could bribe him. Again. Anyway, I'm, we'll wait. We'll save it. We'll save what to do with for the next one. We have to assign governors. We've got to do trade. We've got so much to do. All right. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one.